The following is a partial ANOVA table for a single factor ANOVA analysis. We want to fill out the remaining parts of the table and answer the questions below. So the first part is we can see that the degrees of freedom for the treatment group is 5 and the degrees of freedom for the error is missing, but the total degrees of freedom is 35. Well something that we know is that the total degrees of freedom is simply just the sum of the treatment degrees of freedom and the error degrees of freedom. So that means that this should be equal to 30. And if we want to know how many treatments there are, we know that I minus 1 is equal to 5 from the table. And so I is the number of treatments, which implies that I is equal to 6. So there are 6 treatments. this example. And then we want to know how many observations are in each group. Well, we know that I times J, J minus 1, that is, is equal to 30, the error degrees of freedom. So if I is equal to 6, this implies that this is equal to 6 times J minus 1, which would imply that this must be equal to 5. All right, so if this is equal to 5, that means that J is equal to 6 as well. So the number of observations in each group is equal to 6, and so the total number of observations would be equal to 36. And that makes sense because the total degrees of freedom happen to be n minus 1. The number of observations, the total number of observations in the group minus 1. So this uh, makes sense. Now the next thing that we want to know is we want to find SSE, the sums of squares for this. So, so SSE is something we want to know. Well, we know that SST, the total sums of squares, is equal to SSTR plus SSE. So if we add the two sums of squares together, we'll get this. So if we want to find just SSE, then we can simply take the total sum of squares, subtract off the sum of square treatment, and what's left should be our sums of squares for error. So in other words, 4056.8 minus 2 114.1 is equal to our sums of squared error, which is 40 or 3842. 3842.7. And so now to find the mean squares, this is really pretty straightforward because the mean squares are simply just the sums of squares divided by their corresponding degrees of freedom. So sums of squares divided by their corresponding degrees of freedom. And so we'll find that the mean square for the treatment is equal to SSTR divided by I minus 1, which in this example is 214.1 divided by 5, which will be equal to 42.82. So the mean square for the treatment is 42.82, and the mean squared error is going to be equal to 3,840. 2.7 divided by 30, which is equal to 128.09. So that is the mean squared error, the estimate for the average within variability. So the variability within the treatment groups and the sum of squared, the mean squared for the treatment is the average variability between the treatment groups. So as we can see, that's much smaller than this. And so once we take the ratio for the F test statistic, that is going to be uh, 42.82 divided by the MSE, which is 128.09, we get our F test statistic to be equal to 0 0.33429, which is a small F test statistic. So any test statistic that's really over maybe like six, seven, or eight will probably be significant regardless of the degrees of freedom. But in turn, anything that's really below one is really too small, basically because that's what it's saying that the within variability is much larger than the between variability. And the between variability needs to be larger in respect to be able to reject the null hypothesis because that is the differences in the means. That's what that is accounting for. So this F test statistic makes sense which then implies our p-value is also going to be quite large. So we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis here based upon that. So our F-test statistic comes from, it says, what are the degrees of freedom for the F-test? And so our degrees of freedom comes from an F-distribution with 
I minus one degrees of freedom. So again, I in this case was equal to six minus one is equal to five. Or you can just look up here and say, oh, that's my treatment degrees of freedom. That's my numerator degrees of freedom. And the denominator degrees of freedom should always be the same as the error degrees of freedom. So that in this case is equal to 30 or I times J minus one. So that is the F distribution. And basically what we know is that this distribution is positively skewed and we're looking for the area that's more extreme than our test statistic, which in this case is going to be a lot of the area under the curve. And that is going to be a p-value we're given as 0 0.8814 or 838888814. So this is a very large p-value. So no matter what significance level we get, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, it doesn't seem like the treatment means are different enough to say that the difference is significant. And that's how we can use a ANOVA table and fill it out so that we can get a F-test statistic for a single-factor ANOVA F-test.